All right, we're going to have more on the mudslide at the bottom of the hour with Dominic Di Natale. But first, to my open. You know, sometimes the perception of power is more important than power itself. As our president continues to fumble on the world stage, he single-handedly is bringing about the decline of the United States as a world power, something that impacts you in every way, from your pocketbook to your safety. This decline in power has been ongoing since Barack Obama took office, starting with the red lines, the finger wagging, removing economic sanctions against Iran, allowing it to continue its nuclear buildup, relying on Russian President Putin to broker a deal for Syria's removal of chemical weapons just to save face after announcing that the U.S. planned to attack Syria, and not sending reinforcements to protect our men in Benghazi unilaterally removing the missile defense system that protects Eastern Europe from Russia. All the while, our president trumpeting the reduction of our military on the world stage. Not only are we now perceived as weak, our enemies emboldened, impacting your safety and mine. With this loss of power or the perception of that loss goes manufacturing jobs, trade alliances, and allies standing with us. Weakness encourages aggression. Putin's perception of power is so strong that he took Crimea with virtually no one hurt or killed. Our president threatens cost, claiming to speak for the international community. Except the international community wasn't with the president. The UN, NATO, the EU, no one with an initial was with him. Our president revokes a few Russian businessmen's visas to Disney World and withdraws Putin's invitation to tea with the G7, formerly known as the G8, Putin being the disinvited odd man out. Mr. President, while you're moving teacups, Putin is moving soldiers and tanks. Today, 80,000 Russian soldiers on the Ukraine border. Now you come out and say there will be more costs should Putin take more than Crimea. Since Putin already took Crimea, you really didn't mean what you said, and you didn't say what you meant, so why should he worry now? And while you've got a pen and a phone running around wagging your finger, Putin is running around with tanks and 80,000 soldiers. You brag about reducing the United States military. He increases Russia's military by almost 79%. Putin's influence in Europe and the Middle East increases. Russia is on its way to becoming the dominant world power. And you say this? I think the strong condemnation that it's received from countries around the world indicates uh, the degree to which Russia's on the wrong side of history on this. A regional power? Weak? Really? You engaged him to broker that Syria deal. After you didn't have the fortitude to follow through on your threat, you're now relying on Russia, the KBG agents, truth-telling that Syria is going to eliminate its chemical weapons. And by the way, all the while, Russia is selling weapons to Syria. And don't we rely on Russia to get us into space now that we've shut down our own program? And take a listen to this. Russia is a regional power that is threatening some of its immediate neighbors, not out of strength, but out of weakness. You know, who's looking like they're on the wrong side of history? You're not listening to history. And he who doesn't learn from history is destined to repeat it. Ronald Reagan was a strong president. He trusted, but he verified. He ended the Cold War. You come in and take down the missile defense system in Eastern Europe with nothing in return. Why are you doing this? Do you even know who our enemies are? Do you know that your obligation is to protect us and protect our economy? And you say Russia's a regional power? With all due respect, Mr. President, Putin is a pig, but he's been bitch slapping you since the Edward Snowden mess. And speaking of perception, your Secret Service bozos passing out drunk in hotel hallways, traveling with you in Europe makes you look weak yet again. Do you think Putin's KGB guys would dare do something like that? And I suspect that they probably can handle their stoli better. You draw lines, Mr. President, Putin crosses them. You play make-believe war games, he sends in the troops. You sit around moving teacups, he moves the armored tanks. 
and you want to poke a tiger, this tiger in the eye? The perception of power, Mr. President, is as strong as power itself. And that's my opening statement. With me, former advisor to the UK Defense Ministry and retired military pilot, Michael Kay. All right, Michael, all this talk about sanctions. Hi, Judge. Uh, how are you tonight? I'm good. Good to see you. Good. All this talk about sanctions, uh, and are any of these economic sanctions going to make a difference as it relates to Putin going into the Ukraine uh, to get to Crimea? Well, Judge, I think your opening statement was spot on, perception of power, and that is what has been driving Putin's behavior over the last couple of months. Very different. East Ukraine is different to Crimea, Crimea in terms of Putin's intended land grab. Why? This is the Crimea region handed back to Ukraine in 1956 by Khrushchev. It's essential militarily because of Sevastopol, it's got the big naval base. And one of the conditions of handing it back to Ukraine was all about this naval base, which allowed Putin to project naval power all over the world. Okay. Now, as we know, he's got this back. However, what he still needs to do now is he needs to supply Crimea. He needs to make sure that Crimea gets the energy resources, the utilities. Okay, and, and that's, that's what the these that are. These on. are all the power lines, right? Yeah, this is all the natural gas pipelines that we can see coming out from Ukraine. Okay, Korea. and since Russia, since and because this this is in front of the the water here, Russia can't is not connected to Crimea. There's a waterway, and to use the landlines, he's got to go take eastern Ukraine. Absolutely. Now, this is what the conversation at the moment is all about. We know that what he's done is positioned a lot of troops on that border. However, we also know yesterday that Putin picked up the phone to Obama. Why did he do that? What he's doing is it's a short-term strategy based on hard power to give him as much leverage as possible when he's picking up the phone to Obama. And what he's trying to do is he's trying to say... He's trying to leverage. I'm with you. But why put 80,000 troops here? I mean, it's not like he needs to scare anybody or get permission. Well, he can move in. East Ukraine can't fight with him, can they? It, well, no. I mean, Ukraine don't have the forces to fight with right. Obama. And let's, there's no military solution to this. But what he's doing, Judge, he's, he's posturing. He's, he's putting all of his hard power here. So when he picks up the phone, he's going to talk to Obama about these lines of communication. And what he wants to do is he's going to have a conversation on the lines of Obama and say, look, I'll stand these guys down if you protect my lines of communication. Okay, can he afford to take care of those 80,000 people? I mean, the Russian economy is nowhere near the United States economy. That's a brilliant point. Russia's economy is tanking at the moment. GDP in 2013 is 1.5%, down from 3.2% in 2012. Equities are tanking. Bonds are soaring. The ruble's been sold off over 10% this year. He's invested all of his economy in natural oil and gas, and he's not doing any economic reform. So you're absolutely spot on. He cannot sustain this economically. But he's got the perception of power, which is his leverage to get eastern Ukraine, to get all of these uh, uh, lines into Crimea, which then takes him uh, into the sea. Yeah, he's, all he's done is, is he's exploited a few loopholes. You know all about this, Justice. Just judge, <laughs> with all your justice. You know, he's exploited those, and he's done it very well. The thing is, he's done it through a referendum here, because he knew that he'd get most Was of the Was that a legitimate in referendum? In the eyes of the international community, no. But the international community couldn't do anything about it. Why it's, didn't they? It's a different story. Why didn't they? Why, where's NATO? Where, where's the UN? Where, let, where? Let, let's go to the next map. Okay, so this is all of the NATO countries. This is Russia, and this is the big bit in the middle. Ukraine, Moldova, Belarus. Okay. Belarus is a partner of Russia, so that's not a threat. But Ukraine and Moldova right. is the threat. And the reason for that is because they're, they're having conversations with the EU about the economic side. And what happens is, is that as those, as those conversations progress EU, the natural, the natural um, next step is to talk about NATO, Moldova, these have already been talking with NATO, and, and the Ukraine was as well, which is why Putin's made that land grab for Crimea. Okay. All right. Michael Kay, always good to talk to you. you Thanks too. for Thanks being with me. us Cheers. this evening. All right. And coming up, so who makes the next move in Ukraine? And will the United States be a part of it? And is it a zoo or a slaughterhouse? They killed a healthy giraffe last month, and this month, a family of four lions. That's the topic of tonight's Incipol. What should happen to the zoo that killed a giraffe and now slaughters a family of lions? Facebook or tweet me at Judge Janine.